Hi everyone. Um, so I'm a specialist ASA on big data analytics uh, aligned to the public sector. Um, and uh, been an ASA with AWS for just about a year, but I've been an AWS customer for three years now. Um, so yes, yeah, so enjoying the smart city space because it kind of brings in uh, big data analytics and devices and does some really inter inter uh, interesting things. So let's quickly um, talk through what we have. So, so I think you guys probably seen this slide many times, um, but just, just for the context, let's quickly talk, talk about what are the key ingredients of a city? What makes a city smart? So city planning, obviously that needs a lot of data to analyze and see where you should put roads, where you should put parks, etc. cetera. Um, and we got tons of customers uh, doing that. I'm going to turn this on presentation mode. Sorry, why is it not working? Uh, apologies. Um. Okay. So uh, we've, got, we've got tons of customers uh, who are already doing this. Um, in addition, we have sanitation. Uh, so we had a we had a project last year, a competition where uh, um, you know uh, last which was sponsored by AWS. We had lots of customers joining and won some prizes on that. Uh, parks are a very important part of a smart city. Healthcare, uh, definitely public websites that gives you information. Uh, we want the information to come in a smart way. Um, street maintenance. Uh, we'll uh, the, later on we'll talk through TFL as a use case. Um, Disaster preparedness, um, a smart city needs to let its citizen know when it's time to escape. So in places like uh, San Francisco where, uh, you know, turbulent weather is out there, this is very important. Route planning, uh, extremely useful. Uh, air transport, um, we had uh, London City Airport recently done a project with us uh, uh, making the airport very smart. Um, and smart airport, uh, is you know it does a lot of things you know it, it uh, not only saves energy also makes the transport uh, easy for every commuter uh, in a timely way um, we have voting uh, open data uh, TFL uh, this afternoon is going to talk about open data uh, op open data is key right so uh, we're generating lots and lots of data and AWS has a program for open data where we host that data for people to run lots of analytics, right? Um, not, not just um, um, data from various sensors, but you know, look at whatever segment you want to look at. Ke chemical, uh, ke so chemical engineering data, uh, Landstat data, uh, genomics data, we, we host those on the AWS. Uh, utility monitoring, um, so we, we already know a lot of this because we, uh, most of us have got devices these days which manage the smart meters. Um, but look, look at the government offices and stuff. So, you know, we, we, we could have smart metering put in those and uh, save a uh, lot, lot of funds which could be, uh, you know, pro projected elsewhere where it's more needed. Archives, uh, sensor monitoring, and obviously public safety and policing. Um, so I got some uh, concrete examples uh, on policing later on, uh, which we can go through. So, so those were the key ingredients of a city, but let's look at the key ingredients in technology that makes, uh, uh, that helps you build smart applications. So we kind of see a virtuous cycle over there. Um, so th the first thing to start off with is sensor data. Your um, hundreds of devices collecting data, in fact billions, hundreds is probably an understatement these days, um, and, uh, and we analyze the data and produce something smart with it. We analyze the data in various ways, real-time data, batch data, uh, we apply things like uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, to, uh, to uh, analyze the data as fast as we can, um, and the other process is to make some of the data available publicly, so let others play with it. And once you have this collaboration going on, um, that's where it adds real value to it. So with that, I'm going to start with um, one, of, one of the services that was announced uh, 
well, 2015, uh, AWS IoT, uh, AWS Internet of Things, um, Inter Internet of Things. So first thing that we provide <coughs> is an SDK. So that allows you to put code in your smart devices out there. So we, we provide a variety of SDKs, starting for C, where if you have microcontrollers sitting there and you write, need to write C code is there. There's also JavaScript SDK for IoT. So we make those available for you to write your appli smart, uh, IoT applications. And the second thing we do is, uh, so the, the, the moment, you see, security and authorization is of paramount importance everywhere in AWS, obviously on AWS, uh, IoT as well. So wh when you can control your devices, right, uh, security is very important. So, if, for example, if you have a device at home just to wake you up uh, when the alarm rings, <laughs> you don't want it to slap you too hard, right? So, um, so, so authentication and authorization is very important, um, and we provide that part of the IoT service. Um, then we provide something called a device gateway and uh, a registry. The registry provides a unique ID to every device that connects to the IoT platform. Uh, then we powerful, po provide a very powerful rules engine um, where you define what action you want to take based on the messages that's coming in. In addition, we provide something called a device shadow, which is your alter ego in the cloud um, for your device where you, where you see everything that's going in. So that's one of the components. So what, what I wanted to show to you guys today, how easy it is to start building your applications using AWS IoT, um, a smart city application. That, that's, that's what we've been trying to do. So, so let, let's put this out there. That's the first thing um, to keep in mind. So we, we provide a very uh, comprehensive uh, IoT platform to get you started with your smart devices. So it, it's great that we have smart services, but those services, in order to make them smart, needs to p connect to a powerful <coughs> and rich back-end set of services to be able to crunch the data, process the data very, very fast. So on the left, we see all the SDKs and the device shadows uh, that we talked about, the AWS IoT platform. But for storing the data, we provide a variety of services. We provide S3, um, which is uh, Amazon Simple storage service um, and uh, is an object, is a web scale object storage. Uh, it's, uh, virtually, it scales virtually infinitely um, and uh, you can put data of any type there. Um, so that's very useful. We provide a, a huge array of database services, relational database, NoSQL database like Amazon DynamoDB. Um, then we provide edge services for you to connect to them very fast. We also provide something called a mobile hub for your IoT applications to go and notify your mobile applications that you build so that they can work synchronously. And uh, on the analytics space, um, for you to crunch the data, we make that very easy for you guys by providing a, a very rich set of uh, solutions. So we have Kinesis for streaming data. Um, we also came up with a service last year called uh, uh, Kinesis Analytics, where you can write SQL, which is you know structured query language, probably the world's most favorite language, everyone knows that, uh, to be able to write SQL on the stream itself. Um, and then we provide a data warehouse solution called Redshift. We ha have our managed uh, Hadoop called uh, uh, Elast uh, Amazon Elastic MapReduce or EMR. Um, we also launched uh, last year, well, a month ago in uh, December, uh, reInvent called uh, Amazon Athena, um, which is your serverless um, big data platform. Uh, extremely powerful. Um, and then we have Lambda, um, API Gateway, Amazon DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database. It supports uh, key value pairs plus a document model as well. And then we, on top of that, we have machine learning services. We have uh, Amazon Machine Learning. Uh, which you can start uh, pointing your uh, Amazon machine learning to your data that may be sitting on S3 or on Redshift um, and build a model and uh, expose an API to start doing real-time um, uh, real predictions uh, uh, using um, uh, Amazon machine learning. 
And uh, last year we also announced in reInvent, we also announced a few interesting services which we'll go through in details, uh, such as Amazon recognition, so face recognition. And that's very important in a smart city, right? So you can see how that may be useful in somewhere in an airport, so, um, in a, any kind of secure building entrance. Um, and then we have uh, uh, Amazon Poly um, for you to convert and text to speech and uh, uh, Lex for building conversational bots, right? So can you order me the, so Lex is the uh, engine behind Amazon Alexa. So we may expose those APIs for you to build your own applications as well. On top of that, we have tons of partners uh, who are building uh, very sophisticated solutions um, and that you may be able to use to build your smart city application. So that, that's the second thing I wanted to go through. So we went through IoT, went through the backend engines that helps you to um, build uh, uh, applications. So what else did we do? We uh, announced something called AWS IoT button. So it's just a small button. Um, I'm sure you guys seen on Amazon that we have uh, smart buttons to order your dishwasher and all that stuff, but these are programmable. You can write your code to it, right? Because they connect to the AWS IoT, AWS Lambda, AWS DynamoDB, and Simple Notification Service, Amazon uh, Simple Notification for Service. And uh, it kind of uses the same technology as the um, IoT platform, so it has a rules engine which can fire in a lambda. And lambda, uh, with lambda, you can make a decision. What do you, what action you want to take? So that's uh, really powerful, um, which we make available for you. And also last year, currently on preview, we also announced uh, Amazon Green, AWS Greengrass. So a couple of things to uh, remember. I made some uh, n uh, notes on this. Uh, that. Whatever we do in technology, there are a few things we can change. One is the laws of physics, the laws of economics, and the, and the laws of the land. So what I mean by laws of physics is um, if you have a device out there in the middle of the desert with no connectivity, you can't connect to it, right? So if you, if you build a smart device in your car um, and you're going through a tunnel where there is no connectivity, whatever clever code you write, you cannot reconnect until the physical connection is out there. So we, we looked at that. Then, then we had the uh, laws of economics, right? So if, you, if you're pushing tons and tons of bits of data uh, through a wire, it, it is going to be expensive. So it may sometimes make sense to do a lot of the computing and data on the device itself and send summary across. So laws of economics, we can't change. And lots of the land, you, you may be writing a smart city application that has got regulatory requirements where the data cannot leave the device or certain premises, and you do not want to push the cloud. So we couldn't change this. So what we did, we bought things out to your devices. So what, what we announced this year, uh, last year at reInvent is AWS Greengrass. So pretty much the entire AWS uh, IoT platform, together with Lambda for commu computing, available as a software to put it in your device. So see, I'm sure you, you guys must be thinking of, wow, how, how can we use this? So we have customers already trialing it, like uh, NASA uh, JPL, Jet Propulsion Lab, um, and uh, we have uh, uh, NL and Philips trialing this out, working on this. Uh, we also have partners like uh, Intel, Canonical uh, Annapurna Labs, uh, who are uh, working with, with this particular technology. Right, so quickly, go to, let's go to the quick benefits of uh, using AWS Greengrass. So respond to local events in near real time. So if you're building a smart city app that cannot uh, deal with latency, any, even a tiny little uh, round trip latency is not acceptable. Greengrass is for you. If you want to operate offline where you do not have a network, right? So in an oil rig or um, you know, in the middle of the desert or in, where you, don't, you need to do a lot of computing just there, uh, you want to operate offline where there's no connectivity. Um, and then um, s simplified device programming. Uh, it uses the same Lambda programming models and paradigm for you to write code. So again, it's a software. And uh, again, if you want to reduce cost by not sending data constantly, but 
when you need to. And you can summarize and sell the smaller streams of data to the cloud. Uh, green, green gut is something you should take a look at. Um, so we looked at a few components now. Let's um, look at how would you build uh, something like a smart sensor. Very important uh, in terms of um, a, a smart city to provide uh, you know, uh, electricity using wind farm or solar farms or something like that. So, so this is f a simple step-by-step -step guide. So you'd, you'd put sensors. Sensors, as I said, in, uh, are the fundamentally most important thing when you start looking at uh, a device, building a smart city application. So you'd, you'd put sen sensors, and the sensors would constantly stream data uh, to AWS IoT, where you'd uh, intercept those messages and see what action you need to take. Right, um, and IoT would make those decisions for you and uh, send it back to that particular device. In this case, it's a wind farm. And maybe it just needs to change the angle of it. Maybe it needs to reduce. So whatever control, maybe there is it, the sensor detected a fault. Uh, so it's much easier to proactively go and fix a fault than wait for the fault to propagate. And you know that way is more time consuming to um, uh, to fix the problem. Uh, so that that's uh, that's a, a key uh, solution of how you can make your uh, sensor driven things uh, very smart. Let's look, look at another solution like a connected car. So, um, for example, we want, um, we want to rely on cars rather, rather than building out sensors, which may be expensive on every road, every traffic um, uh, cross section. Uh, we, we can use advantage of the cars and, uh, and monitor things like speed bumps, monitor things like uh, delays. You know, uh, this particular uh, park lane from um, uh, you know, uh, Piccadilly crossing to Oxford Circus should take you, for example, one minute. If you suddenly see you know, tw 10 or 20 cars are reporting that segment is taking quite a significantly long time, you know there's something wrong, right? Uh, you should proactively take uh, some action on that. And, and on top of that, if you're collecting that data for years, months, and you're storing on S3. Now you can do predictive stuff because you have built up a rich data set. Now you can actually, rather than your sensors telling you that something is going wrong, you need to send people or fix some, something, you actually know this day at this time is going to go wrong, right? Um, so, um, so yeah, so that, that's, that makes things uh, very powerful. So what I wanted to give to you guys and um, Hopefully, um, you'll take a note of this URL, uh, uh, otherwise we'll make these presentations available as well. Um, so go to awsamazon.com slash getting started uh, projects deploy IoT application. So deploying this, uh, it's got four steps, um, and the CloudFormation template is already there. It's a PDF guide, talks you through how to do this. I think within half an hour to an hour, uh, you'd be able to deploy a reasonably smart IoT-based application. So what you do, you produce your thing that will produce certain messages to the IoT gateway, you'll build a rule, and you'll have an IAM, IAM role that representing the authentication um, that you allow that particular device to go through and do, take certain actions. Uh, you'd register that on Amazon DynamoDB, and that would invoke a Lambda function. <coughs> and finally, whatever you're doing, you can visualize it to a dashboard. And you know what, how much is this gonna cost you? Uh, if you're in the free tier, 0.013 uh, US dollars. So try it out, uh, it, it's worth a shot. Um, right, so I wanted to go through a few more things, uh, unless I've got time. Um, is um, so Amazon machine learning. <coughs> so what, what we did, um, Amazon has got years of experience in the machine learning field. So what we did, we exposed certain APIs to, for you to, if you have the data for you to build a model uh, to be able to uh, you know, now run queries against that model to give you some predictions. We made that available through an APIs. 
Uh, and when I say APIs, most Amazon uh, AWS services are available either through a CLI, command line interface, or through a REST endpoint, HTTP, um, or through SDK. You can programmatically write your code to be able to do that. Um, so um, it, it provides you some wizards um, for you to do a few step-by-step, -step, build your model from your data. Uh, in addition, it also puts some visualization, tells you the quality of your model, right? So how good um, the predictions is going to yield. So try that out, uh, very easy, very easy to get started with. Um, and uh, I wanted to also show you uh, on the um, Amazon Polly, let me see my sound, let's see. So th this is the other service that we uh, announced at reInvent in 2016 December. Turn text to speech, uh, lifelike speech, right? So if I, so l let's listen, li li listen to this. When, when I mean lifelike speech, to make smart, s smart city applications, you want them to be not speaking like a robot. It is five o'clock now, not right now. You want it to speak like a human, right? So. So you see, it's not just reading our text. It's got all the punctuations. It, it speaks. So that is that that is like in you know, a deep learning in, in speech applied. So let's listen to a few more things. So ability for a system to in, in interpret common text formats such as abbreviations, uh, n numerical sequences, and uh, homographs. So let's. It could have said, NV is 54 degree F. No, it, it knows. So that, that's, that shows uh, how, um, um, how uh, solutions like this work. We live for the music, live from the Madison Square Garden. Right. So you see, live, live, same spelling. It, it knows how to pronounce that. So that, that is quite powerful. Um, and I can't do that. Um, Peter Pike, Pike. So let's. Right. So, um, so you know, we kind of. Uh, if you look at higher up the stack, um, we, in addition to providing, uh, you know, platform like EC2, uh, ECS, where you can write your own code and SDKs to build your own machine learning um, platforms, you're also providing solutions higher up the stack where uh, you already have a service ready-made for you to use. Right, so what, what else we launched is uh, Amazon Lex, um, and I think that's very useful in a smart city application. Um, you know, you, we, we, we deal with lots of public service uh, every day, and uh, no one likes queues, right? So I think this will speed things up. Um, so what, what, what things we can do is informational bots. Uh, we can ask like uh, news updates, weather information. Interestingly, someone like me would ask game scores. Uh, application bo uh, bots like, uh, well, um, what's my, uh, you know, submit my meter reading uh, or, uh, you know, order food, manage bank accounts, things like those. It's conversational uh, application bot. Enterprise produ productivity bots that will streamline your enterprise work and that you can do. So check sales number, uh, market performance, inventory status, uh, very powerful. And uh, IoT bots, um, conversational interfaces for device interactions. So with your wearables, um, right? With your with your other appliance. Um, so yeah, so th that's something definitely worth looking at. In addition, for um, image recognition, we launched uh, something called uh, Amazon Recognition. So let's see if this uh, video works. So it's just um, trying to see uh, with the drone, uh, with image recognition, to see, keep an eye on 
uh, someone when, when that particular face matches. So with the current service, you can do face recognition. So think about the applications that you can really build. Um, very useful, right? So, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you can build funny uh, things as well, uh, social media-based applications as well. But I think is on the smart city, this becomes very important in security, um, in a like entrance to the gates, etc. Um, so that that's very powerful. So now looking at some of the customers uh, use cases what others have done on this space uh, London City Airport uh, the smart airport experience project was funded by the government um, and uh, they worked uh, with the living plant ITSA uh, the goal of the project was to demonstrate how IoT technologies could be used both to enhance customer experiences and improve operational efficiency in an airport and I don't know whether uh, those of you who have gone to uh, London City Airport, is, to me, is one of the most efficient London airports, um, you know, e in and out of the door in 15 minutes. Um, well, well most, most of the time. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so th they used uh, the, uh, the Arbon operating system in UOS, uh, hosted near AWS as the backbone for real-time data collection, processing anal an analytics, and marshalling and event management. Um, yeah, you can see how useful uh, the airport could be to streamline customer experience, right? So, um, react to delays, monitor every sensor out there. If, if some luggage has fallen down from the, which could cause additional delays. Um, you know, what's the queue length over here? Shall we move the queue to the other side? Temperature sensor, uh, vibration, you know, mm, air pollution. Um, Everything in, in a in a s airport is very important. If you if you can uh, get those metrics and uh, metrics and um, use that in a powerful smart way, um, let's look at let's look at uh, state and local government. Right, state and local have, have got lots of smart city applications, in archives, in elections, um, in the buying services, in city planning, payment systems, uh, such as paying your parking fines. Some of us have all the time. Uh, mobile apps. So Peterborough Council, uh, very local to us over here, have uh, used AWS in a, in a very nice way to build some of these uh, applications. So they got integrated weather stations, smart energy metering, um, IoT devices installed in people's home, and automated libraries with uh, council's core applications and data, sense, uh, and data sets. Peterborough Council uh, aims to run the city in a revolutionary new way. Uh, the AWS deployment acts as a hub for all legacy application integration of smart IoT devices, analytics, and software as a service uh, applications. So this use case is live on our website. Uh, definitely worth looking into it. Future of policing, right? Um, very important, right? Um, so imagine a world with uh, connected citizens, uh, community engagement, empowered by innovative technology. Um, this is a place where open dialogue between police and their citizens and between departments is useful. Uh, it's no longer a utopian world, it, it's very much possible in a connected community. It can be realized. Law and enforcement throughout the country are increasing transparency, instilling tr trust, and making more informed policing decisions to better protect our citizens. One of the primary things of a, of a city is safety uh, that it provides, and providing that in a smart way is, is very important. So we, we have a, a site dedicated to it. If you look at amazon.com slash state and local future hyphen off hyphen policing, uh, we got uh, Two police departments that, that are publicly referenceable at the moment, such as uh, Seattle Police Department uh, and Dallas Pol Police Department. And there's a nice YouTube cl uh, uh, um, clip out there also showing. So t t take time to have a look into it uh, and how these services may be useful um, in making your cities even smarter. Um, some of the partners in this space. Um, so with uh, AWS services, um, you know, we've got about 90 uh, odd services now. Um, partners are building really, really smart, powerful application using AWS and making those available uh, very easily. Um, such as uh, we have a crime forecasting system 
Um, Hunch Lab is a web-based crime forecasting system. Uh, its core function to help police departments allocate resources more efficiently by better anticipating crimes. A bit more predictive analytics. Some of the services that we talked about allows you to do so. Uh, mobile forensic uh, uh, software, iCrime Fighter, I think it's available on uh, iOS uh, marketplace already, um, is a mobile forensic software and evidence gathering system. Um, so if you, if you look at the page I pointed out over there, there are tons of other partners. Um, you know, uh, you know we, we have partners like Intel working with us um, in building a smart city applications such as this. Health, right? Uh, so we, we all have a kind of a um, you know aging population with growing population with millions of patients, record number of uh, children and families enrolled in social and human services, and then there is definitely a need to manage those benefits and programs um, for the citizens, and you know funds with every government is reducing, um, so trying to make best out of those funds. Um, so, big data analytics empower uh, human and health services uh, agencies to become increasingly collaborative and generate insights that will identify trends in utilization, quality metrics, and incidence of redundancy. So, how that can be, uh, how s you know, AWS services can be useful to building a smart health applications for. Um, um, for, for your smart city. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we got a page um, uh, located for that as well. Uh, also, collaboration between inter-agencies uh, becomes very easy. So, and then transport. Um, so we, we went through aviation before. This is, this is surface transport, uh, parking solutions, uh, connected smart interaction, uh, intersections, uh, smart routing and navigation, uh, fleet and um, track, um, tracking, monitoring. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we have uh, Tata Motors uh, connected a huge fleet of uh, trucks, for example, and through AWS, um, and you know they're getting great advantages by using uh, AWS platform. Uh, cities are leading the way in innovation with transport solutions that span open data initiatives. Um, Tesh is going to talk through that uh, later on. Uh, and then citizen service improvements, smart IoT projects, including IoT. Uh, as both population and data volumes increase, state and local governments are turning to AWS to provide secure, cost-effective, and scalable IT infrastructure uh, for your smart transport solutions. Um, so this is a use case on uh, how uh, Intel and AWS partners to build uh, the congestion charging um, part of that. So um, we have uh, I Intel DK100 sensors over there, uh, use the AWS IoT platform, uh, and the same things that we showed before uh, to send the messages across and to, you know, and, and then we provide a rich dashboard using City Manager, I think which is out on display outside um, as well for you guys to have a look at it. Um, so yeah, so that's a quick uh, run through. Um, I'll take some questions before I hand over to uh, uh, Ritesh. You mentioned a bit about the uh, machine learning and the prediction. And uh, in a different to the line, you mentioned the kind of chart, XI chart type of the uh, prediction. But the not the chart type, but the uh, based on the machine learning. Can you tell us a little bit example of the what data is used for what kind of prediction you have made? So, so pr 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 lots of things. You can do things with, uh, with Amazon Machine Learning. You, got, um, you can do like binary classification. Uh, you can do um, you know, other forms of machine learning as well. So it, it depends on the data you have. For example, you uh, just outside the context of smart cities. So you, you are, for example, working building an insurance application. So you have collected years of data based on different customers you have seen applying for insurance, and you know. So you you can uh, see that which customers are more likely to get your insurance product rather than uh, having a database of 
tens of thousands of customers and calling every one of them uh, and um, uh, you know, see the penetration that way, you can have machine learning tell you, all right, you've got tens of thousands, you're actually going to get better penetration rate if you call only these 3,000 people. So that's probably one of the applications. The other is, uh, for example, uh, fraud detection. So you are doing an online transaction, you're buying something online, um, um, and uh, so you, uh, the obviously the banking uh, service over there provides you an SLA of how long the transaction should take. Uh, and if it's fraudulent, there's a very small amount of that time of the transaction is allocated to intercept the fraud and stop it. There's no point of stopping the fraud after the fraud. I mean, it's not no point, it's the wrong thing to say. But, you know, if, if you stop the fraud after the fraud has happened, so it's better to stop it, intercept it uh, before, before it happens. So, so such is yet to example, what is the uh, technology or algorithms behind it? Yeah. What is the algorithm? Or yeah. theory, theory behind the, uh, such a two examples. Right, so the, uh, the Amazon machine learning has got um, three algorithms, uh, uh, quite a few Amazon proprietary algorithms behind you to do those sort of classifications. Uh, we, also expo we also have uh, deep learning uh, AMIs, so Amazon uh, machine images available for you to write your own. So we recently we launched, uh, announced our partnership with MXNet um, which is a deep learning, learning library, um, allows you to write your own um, models, classifications that you like, um, especially on deep learning. Uh, those are available, uh, so those AMIs are available with, uh, uh, on our P2 instances uh, with CUDA drivers for you to write code. Uh, so it's a substantial amount, it's quite an array of things that you can do with it. Shortly, is uh, do you have experience with uh, images, satellite? This means on uh, recognition aspect, and then using machine learning. Emergency I images, satellite, Earth satellite. Right, uh, satellites. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know whether whether we have an active customer, but I know we are working collaboration with few. Uh, European and uh, American uh, organizations um, to for image uh, analysis of satellites. Uh, we obviously expose uh, the Landstat data uh, available uh, on, uh, is now available to download in the AWS. Uh, so we expose that as a one of our open uh, data project. Um, <coughs> so definitely we're taking a look at it and that's, that actually, uh, it, it made a uh, lot of research, uh, as soon as we made that available, there were like billion times it'd been downloaded since for people to do experiment with uh, satellite imagery. Yes, but if you think about the cities, for example, London, <coughs> the, the main problem is pollution. So if you don't utilize satellite where you can monitor and catch the pollution, there's no meaning in a cities, because then you relate with health, this is an impact. <laughs> Absolutely, this is not something that I know straight away, but I'm, I'm sure there are organizations and partners that are working together to work with satellite imagery, air pollution, uh, definitely. Um, as a matter of fact, as I'm working with some other public sector essays to write uh, how to manage, uh, monitor air pollution and, uh, and expose those uh, outside as well. So that, that is very, I agree with you, that's very powerful. That's great, well, thank you very much, Frankie. I thought that was excellent. <laughs> Can I just ask one question before you, you disappear? I really like that we can't break the law of physics and we can't break the law of economics. What was your economics example? Uh, the cost of uh, bits transferred to the cloud. So if you have a device which produces tons and tons of bytes of data constantly, um, you know, it's going to be expensive for you to constantly do that uh, computing on the cloud. So in that case, you might as well do some of the computing on the device itself and only send deltas across to the cloud.